I have seen a lot of videos where people have tried to give that aesthetic dreamy slow motion feel to their videos but something feels really odd it feels like this thing is lagging atak atak ke chal rahi hai aisa lagta hai I'm assuming that they are importing the video, bringing it onto the timeline, right clicking on it, going to speed duration, giving a fancy percentage and that's it. That's the slow mo, right? Big mistake. Even I used to do that a lot. So in this video we will be understanding the concept of frame rate. We will talk about motion blur and how it is related with shutter speed. We will discuss the 180 degree shutter rule, gonna break down how exactly slow motion works and two ways or techniques to get a smooth slow motion in post production. We will be doing that in Premiere Pro, but keep in mind that those techniques can also be applied in any of the editing softwares that you might be using. And finally, we will talk about two common mistakes that a lot of beginners make related to this slow motion thing and how to avoid those. Let's begin with the concept of frame rate. Remember that scene in Tar Zameen par jab wo pages ko flip karta hai? Those were just individual drawings, right? But because he was flipping them at such a high speed, hame aisa lagta hai ki wo bachcha apni family se dur ho raha hai. We don't see those pictures as individual drawings anymore, but we see it as something in motion. We can say the same thing about videos as well. A video is nothing but a collection of individual unique frames or photographs and jab in images ko play kiya jata hai at a certain speed, it's too much for our brains to distinguish them as individual images and as a result, it all gets stitched together and we perceive motion or rather the illusion. of motion the number of these individual still images shown in one second is known as frame rate and it is expressed in frames per second or fps one frame per second is nothing but one still image per second hame easily farak pata lag raha hai individual frames ka 10 frames per second is something where we start to see things moving but smooth to bilkul bhi nahi hai 18 frames per second feels really better when compared to 10 fps but 24 frames per second that's where it gets sold completely 24 or 25 fps is the standard for cinema american and south korean movies are shot and displayed at 24 fps whereas india australia and western europe follow the cinematic standard of 25 fps ab ye kyun 24 25 fps that depends whether a country is under a ntsc or a pal region but that's not the point the point is जैसे जैसे फ्रेम रेट बढ़ता है फुटेज स्मूद होते हुए दिखती है 50 fps feels smoother than 25 fps. Videos shot at higher frame rates feel more smooth because they literally have more frames in one second, जिसकी वजह से ज्यादा डिटेल कैप्चर होती है कोई भी मूवमेंट के छोटे से छोटे पार्ट के डिटेल की फोटो होती है इसलिए स्मूद लगता है बट दिस स्मूदनेस गिव दैट सो पॉपरा वाइब which is not desired when it comes to cinema because movies have been following the standard of 24 fps since a very long time and our eyes are now used to the look of 24 fps and the amount of motion blur that it brings to the table if you don't know what motion blur is try doing this type of hand movement you'll see that whenever the hand is in motion it looks blurry the faster you move the blurrier it looks and if you move it slowly the amount of blur decreases when it comes to videos some amount of blur is actually necessary for the movement to look natural too much of blur and it looks ghostly we start to see the streaks and on the flip side if there is zero motion blur it looks too sharp and choppy the movements in 1 and 3 seem really weird whereas shot number 2 looks natural and believable all of these were shot at the same frame rate of 25 fps and the difference lies in the shutter speed that was chosen for each of these shots the amount of blur that a moving object can have in a video is dependent on the shutter speed that was used during the shoot now if you are familiar with the photography basics and since a video is nothing but just a series of photographs it will be quite easy for you to understand why there is an increase in blurriness as we start using slow shutter speeds and why does the video get sharper and lacks motion blur as we move towards the faster shutter speeds but if you don't have any idea of how motion blur is related with shutter speed and how it is one of the three tools to control the exposure of a shot let me know in the comments and i can make a detailed video where we can revisit the basics in the digital age modern filmmakers have been using a shutter speed of 1 by 50 while shooting at 24 or 25 fps this generates the right amount of motion blur and the movement looks natural 
and pleasing on the eyes. This is because our brains are familiar with the look that is generated by this frame rate shutter speed combo since we see it all the time when we are watching movies. This is the same look that the film cameras used to and can produce while shooting at 24 fps when a rotary shutter with a shutter angle of 180 degrees is used to expose the film stock. Now this brings me to the 180 degree shutter rule that is floating around on the internet. It says that if you are shooting at x fps then your shutter speed should be 1 over 2x for the most natural looking movement at that particular frame rate. So for 24 or 25 fps it should be 1 over 48 or 1 over 50. Some camera companies don't have the option of 1 over 48 so 1 by 50 can surely work in that case. For 30 fps it should be 1 over 60. For 120 fps it should be 1 over 240 and so on. I agree 100% with this rule when it comes to shooting at 25 fps that is when I have to shoot something in real time because it helps to emulate the cinematic look. But as we move ahead with the FPS, it kind of becomes more dependent on how you plan to deliver the video. It becomes more like an artistic choice or a preference rather than being a rule, at least in my opinion. But yes, it is important to know something as a guideline when we are starting out so that we know when to break it for creative storytelling. We can talk more about this rule, how to break it and how some of the biggest directors have broken it and used it creatively in some other video. But for now, think about this. If 24 or 25 FPS is the standard for cinema and since we all want to make quote unquote cinematic stuff, why do we have the option of shooting at higher frame rates? For slowing down the motion. Before we get into that part, consider this analogy at first. Let's say that we have a car and it has to cover a distance of 100 kilometers from point A to point B. We also have this observer who is noticing everything that's happening. In case 1, the car is gonna have a constant speed of 100 kilometers per hour. So the time that it's gonna take to cover up that distance is gonna be 1 hour. Let's assume that this is the normal speed, the baseline speed for our observer. Now in case 2, things are gonna change. This time the car will be moving at 25 km per hour and that is why the same distance of 100 km will be covered in 4 hours. When we compare that with case 1, the car will be taking a significant amount of time and it will appear to move at a much slower rate or speed when we speak for our observer for whom the baseline speed is 100 km an hour. Now let's keep this in mind and talk about videos. Let's say that we have a video of 1 second in length. This is shot at 100 frames per second. The capture frame rate as we call it is 100 frames per second. Let's label this as world A. In this world, it takes just 1 second to play these 100 frames. Now there is another world B. The one where we open up our editing softwares and set our timelines to 25 fps. This is also called as playback frame rate because this is the rate at which we want to edit, export and play our videos. This world can only have 25 frames in one second. So when you transfer a 100 fps clip from world A to world B, one of the two scenarios that take place is those 100 frames get divided into four parts. Each part has 25 frames in it and is of one second in duration. So when you play the same 100 frames in world B, it's gonna take you an exact 4 seconds. Similar to the previous analogy, because of the changes made in the playback speed, the same 100 frames, the same clip takes more time to get completed when we drop the playback speed from 100 fps to 25 fps. And that is how motion is slowed down. If we understand this via a real life example, on the left, we have a clip shot and played back at 50 fps. When we play back the same clip at 25 fps, we will get our slow motion and it will take 2x the time it took for clip 1 to get completed. So your instinct might tell you that okay, I just need to import my higher frame rate video clip, create a sequence of 25 fps and I just need to drop this clip into the timeline for slow motion. But hey, I cannot see any slow motion. Why is that? So remember when I said that there are two scenarios that take place when you transport a HFR clip from world A to world B? The slow motion thing was the second scenario. In the first one, the editing software assumes that, hey, I should not change the total duration of this clip. It should be of one second, just like how it was in world A. But the thing is, I can only have 25 frames in one second in my world. And the problem is, 
This video has 100. So, what should I do? That is when it does something really bad. It starts deleting the frames. It keeps just one frame from a set of four frames and deletes the other three. The video comes out still at 25 FPS, but instead of a complete set of 100 frames, we only have 25. The software deletes 75 frames in total. We will talk more about this when we are discussing the common mistakes. But one thing for sure, if we are chasing slow motion, we of course want to avoid scenario 1. And that is why we need to tell Premiere or any of the editing softwares to not delete any frames. There are two ways of telling this to Premiere. So first of all, it does not matter if you already brought the clip onto the timeline and Premiere has already deleted the frames. We can always revert that. So to do that, you'll select your clip from the timeline itself. Right click, go to speed duration and I'll tell Premiere to adjust the speed of this clip to 50% since 50% of 50 FPS is 25 FPS. This percentage value will of course be different for different capture frame rates and different playback or timeline frame rates. And now, if you play it, we'll get our slow-mo. The smooth, silky, buttery slow motion that we were looking for. So this is the first method. In the second one, let me just undo this. Now in the second method, we will be changing some settings as well, but those need to be done before we bring the clip onto the timeline. We'll come to the project panel, select your clip, right click, go to modify, interpret footage. We'll select this option which says assume this frame rate and over here, we'll type the frame rate of the timeline. In this case, it is 25 FPS. And when I play it, I'll get the same result. Now coming back to the point which says we have to shoot at a higher frame rate to achieve a smooth slow motion during the post-production. Why is that? Why can't we achieve a nice slow motion through a video shot at a lower frame rate? Let's say we have one second of a 24 FPS clip and the premiere timeline is set at 24 FPS as well. Now if you're gonna stretch this original one second video clip by 50%, it's gonna be of two seconds in length. The 24 frames that we had are now distributed over a span of 2 seconds. That means each second gets 12 frames. So I guess you can totally see where this is going because the effective frame rate of the clip has become 12 frames per second. And if you recollect from the beginning of this video, we saw how choppy the look of 10 FPS was. 12 FPS is obviously not gonna look any better than 10 FPS. But I guess you're gonna say that, hey, the timeline frame rate is at 24 frames per second. Why are you saying 12 frames per second? To answer that, I said effective frame rate because the editing software is going to divide each of these 12 frames into two so that it can have 24 frames in one second. But basically, each of these frames is repeated twice. It's effectively just 12 unique frames per second. And that is why it looks choppy. And this is not just for 50%. 100% represents the real time playback speed. If you go anything below that with a 24 or 25 FPS clip, the effective number of frames, the unique number of frames is going to be less than 24 or 25 in a second. So to summarize, the more you stretch a 24 FPS clip into a 24 FPS timeline, the lower you make the percentage in terms of speed. The number of unique frames start to decrease. It starts to go below 24. The individual frames start to repeat and as a result, it gets choppy during the playback. So to be able to get a smooth slow motion in post, always shoot at a higher frame rate to be able to have enough frames when playing back at a lower frame rate. Now there are some common mistakes that I used to make when starting out and maybe you might be making these at present. So the first one is shooting everything in higher frame rates. So when starting out with filmmaking, I always was unsure whether would I want to have a particular moment to play in real time or would I want to have it in slow motion. So to avoid any sort of confusion, I always used to shoot everything in higher frame rates, say 50 FPS, because that way during the edit, if I wanted something in real time, I could just drop the 50 FPS clip on the 25 FPS timeline and it would play at normal speed. But if I wanted to make it slow motion, that option was always there because of shooting in HFR in the first place. Now that is an incorrect approach because first, as we discussed already, in this case, Throwing a 50 FPS clip on a 25 FPS timeline will just delete half of the frames, which is definitely not favorable. Secondly, 
this clip will be having an incorrect amount of motion blur if we did follow the 180 rule during the shoot. The original 50 fps clip would have been shot at a shutter speed of 1 over 100 and the resultant 25 fps clip that you would get on the timeline will still be having a shutter speed of 1 over 100. It will look choppy and sharp because of that faster shutter speed and a lower frame count. It won't be a true 25 fps real time playback since for that we need to have a shutter speed of 1 over 50 for a correct amount of motion blur. So the only way to use a higher frame rate clip into a lower frame rate timeline while following the 180 rule is by slowing it down. That way we will have all of the frames and yes the shutter speed will still be 1 over 100 but since the clip will be in slow motion it will make sense to not have too much of motion blur as objects moving at a slower pace don't look that blurry. So the takeaway from this is while shooting always be clear about what you want to have during the edit. If you are chasing the film look and if you want something in real time always shoot at 24 or 25 fps if you want something in slow motion only then use the higher frame rates now the second mistake that i used to do is extreme stretch of the clip now what do i mean by that back when i was new to all of this if i had a 50 fps clip to be slowed down in post i used to go really wild with these percentage values now we need to understand that there is a maximum limit up to which we can stretch a clip in this case it is up to 50% since 50% of 50 fps is 25 fps if we go beyond this there won't be just enough frames for a smooth 25 fps playback we will start getting frame repetition as discussed earlier and this will result in a choppy slow motion despite shooting in higher frame rates so the takeaway from this is always know the limits With a 24 FPS clip in a 24 FPS timeline, it is 100%. We cannot go any lower than this. For a 30 FPS clip in a 24 FPS timeline, it is 80%. For 60 FPS clip, it is 40%. And for 120 FPS, it is 20%. Same kind of math can be applied when the timeline frame rate is 25 FPS and we are having 50 and 100 FPS clips. One more thing to keep in mind is the frame rate combination that you use. For example, You cannot place a 30 fps clip in a 25 fps timeline and expect to get a smooth slow motion since you won't get an even percentage value when you do that. Now that we know how to do the slow mo perfectly, we will be talking about speed ramping and how to create a smooth speed ramp transition in the next video. If you did find this tutorial helpful, feel free to show your support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends and maybe subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and I will see you in the next one.